a Toast to Life podcast. We're out here in LA, downtown, you know, the city where we all love. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share this podcast. Stay tuned for the movement. We're changing the narrative. Let's go. Two, and we are finally again back with another late and great guest. But welcome back to the most organic, most authentic podcast, It's Also Life Podcast. Yeah. So we have a damn Irwin, originating from where? Irwindale? Irwindale. Yeah. Irwindale originated from, and if you have not yet been there, to Hidden String Gym, the owner. Adam in the house, baby. Yes, sir. So if you haven't been there, then you're really messing up because you got to go check out Hidden Strength, great lighting, great equipment, a lot of big power lifters, right? But, dude, thank you for coming on. I know you're not usually on camera and we're finally – this is your first podcast? Yeah, it is. Yeah, first podcast. Yes, we're the first ones. First ones in there. All right, let, let, let's, huh? huh? Popping the cherry. <laughs> We're popping the cherry. Podcast cherry, yes. Yeah, yeah, thank over you for there. having me, man. No, nah, bro, I appreciate, appreciate you. Um, let's get right into it. When did Hidden Strength come about? When did you start it? How did it come about? So hit us with the knowledge. When, when did you open up Hidden Strength? From the very beginning. Very beginning, bro. Very beginning. Okay, so... It started, uh, we opened it in 2017, so quite a while back. Um, you know, the opportunity came up for me. I'm, you know, grateful to be surrounded by a bunch of friends. They own multiple businesses, so mm-hmm. they were able to set me in the right path, you know? Oh, shit, nice. Even at a young age, so yeah, even, yeah. like, in high school, I was hanging out with people two, three years older than me. So they, they knew what they were doing. They had their thing going. Yeah. And then the opportunity came for me. Um, to open a gym, and then I just took it. So were you already, like, uh, business-minded, like, yo, I got to be in the gym, or is just, like, the opportunity was there, and you're like, fuck it, let's run it? Um, the opportunity was there, and I just took it, and then, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So how'd you come up with the name, like, Hidden Strength? Hidden Strength. That's... Well, what do you think when you hear Hidden Strength? The power within, bro. Like, you have exactly. it inside you. Exactly. So that's what I was thinking, too, when I came up with the name. So pretty much, you know, nowadays, even like in powerlifting, the sport and everything, yeah, you're seeing like girls that are like 114 pounds, they're lifting like three times body weight, right? Yeah. And then that's what kind of comes to mind for me, that like everyone has their own hidden strength within themselves. We just got to find it, right? Mm, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we got, you got to <laughs> make some noise for that. That's so... The first time you opened it, take us, this podcast, you know, everybody that we've had on uh, so far for the past Mm -hmm. 48 episodes, at least more than half of that, they all have something going. They all have a business. They all have an idea that they're going and moving forward with. Mm -hmm. What was your process? How did you obtain the funds? How did you obtain the location? Like, take us through that process for someone at one point, that wants to, like, everybody at one point, I know I did, like, yo, I want to open a gym at one point in my life. So but for me, I guess I'm kind of different because I still work a nine-to-five job. Yeah. No so, shit. Yeah. So <laughs> So I guess I'm different from, like, many other entrepreneurs. I still work a nine-to-five job, and um, I do the gym on my off time. When I get off work, I go to the gym. What the f- <laughs> mic drop? Yo, so, yeah. but, like, why is that? Usually when people get into a new business, they, yo, I left my other job, and I'm good here now. <laughs> like, this is it. Um, Like, is it a necessity for you to be working that 9 to 5? Or is, or is it more like you personally, like, yo, I need to be working and being active 24-7? 
I think it's more of that one. I like to be working. I like to be, you know, the work ethic. I like to be on a schedule, routine. Yeah. Um, you know, and um, like I said, the opportunity, um, it, it allows me to do both. So mm. most people, they don't like their job, right? Most people, they want to quit their job, quit their nine to five, and yeah. then open a business, right? So for me, I like my job. I've been working there for eight years. So like er, after I graduated high school, um, the year after that, I was already working at my current job. And I'm still there, so. Oh, shit. Yeah. So and you, then, when you get off of that job, you just go straight to the gym? Yeah, exactly. Damn. <laughs> Talk about fucking work ethic and hustling. So with, with all that, did you, like, save up the funds to open the gym? Because I don't think even at the location you're in mm-hmm. now, like, you went from one, one area to opening a bigger one. Like, that's still a lot of money invested. So... Um, when we first opened, like I said, I was surrounded by a group of friends um, that they knew what they were doing. They had multiple businesses. So um, one of my homies at that time hit me up. He wanted to open a business, too. Yeah. So and then, you know, I ran with it with him. And then so we were in it together. Um, but last year, we actually ended up splitting up. So after COVID and everything. So it's just been kind of me running the gym. With, was that like a hard transition, losing that partner and then still you running it by yourself? Um, I would say yes and no. Uh, there's this pro, there's the pros and cons. Correct. Um, it is harder because everything is on you. Um, if something goes wrong, you know, that's on you to take care of. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, making decisions, at the end of the day, it's like it's all on you. And then... Um, you don't really have to talk to anyone. And then whatever you want to do, like for me, whatever I, like, um, whatever decisions I wanted to make for the gym, I, I just had to go through it on my own. Mm. Yeah. But do you have like a, for the gym, do you have mm-hmm. a group of people that you run ideas by uh, that tell you certain ideas or tell you like their feedback? Um, for the most part, like I have a lot of friends that support me. Um, you know, ever since the beginning, you know, I wouldn't be here without them. Yeah. And then a lot of the times, for the most part, it's just me. But I like running through, I like to run through it with my members, too. Because at the end of the day, it's all for them. Mm, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The it, gym and everything, it's all the, for my members. The ones that keep it alive. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How many members do you have right now off the top of your head? Do you know? Uh, right now, we have 160 members. Damn. Yeah. Damn, that's... <laughs> that. How, and when you opened it up, uh, you said in 2000... 2017. 17. How many members did you open up with? Uh, at that time, like, it was in the beginning, you know, I was just trying to get people in. Like, um, we were just charging, like, the lowest price we can just to get people in, you know? Yeah. Um, at that time, I think we had less than 100, to be honest. Damn. Yeah. So, raising your... So, you said you charge them less. Raising the prices, did a lot of them step out? Um, you mean moving into the new spot? Yeah. To be honest, no. A lot of our members, they supported us since the beginning. And then moving into the new spot, you know, I, I upgraded everything. We got new equipment. Lights. New lighting, everything. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to say exactly. the lights are... <laughs> they're on point. Dude, Some, when I... Yeah. The when muscles I, look When bigger. I saw those lights... <laughs> <laughs> when I saw those lights, I knew, like... I had, to, I had to get them. Yeah. I had to get them in my gym. And then, yeah, they supported me from the beginning. And, like, shout out to all of my members, dude. Like, it, clap it up for all the members. Though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you haven't tapped in, you need to tap in. But if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you need to subscribe. Bro, we're doing this because we love to do this. Mm-hmm. And we get to meet people like Adam, like all the other guests that we've had. Because... I threw this idea to Adam, when was it, like two weeks ago when we went to the gym? He was working out. He was talking with everybody. And I was like, yo, I got to go up to him. I got to go ask him. And I think you were just kind of like, uh, what? (laughs) (laughs) But you you said something to me that day. And on your personal page, you have your car. You had your car. It was a Honda Accord? Yeah, Honda Accord. 
2012. 2012. Sick. Decked out. So if we'll put his uh, at name at the bottom, but decked out Honda Accord, I was like, yo, like, that's a sick ride. Like, you drive that? What'd you tell me, Adam? I mean, that was my car back in the day. I sound old saying that. But <laughs> at that time, um, I was really into cars, um, really into, like, modding cars. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, having it heavily modded, stuff like that rims seats and everything swapped out um but honestly like that was just a phase and after getting over that phase yeah. you know i pretty much sold all the parts on that car to invest into the gym damn how i like off the top of your head how much did you invest into the gym when you first stepped into it um first investment into the gym yeah first investment that the thing the thing is Everybody, like, we can always say, yo, like, you know, you just have to invest, invest. But people don't really know the amount that you need to have in hand before, like, we, obviously we can get loans, we can get uh, other people to help us out. But in your own pocket, like, people don't know the exact amount because everybody thinks, yo, we can go and do this by ourselves. Like, even here in the setup, people think, like, yo, we can come in and we can – our right. own podcast and stuff like that and like yo power to you but i'm gonna tell you right now off the top of my head i know i already in equipment by themselves we have over two thousand almost three thousand renting <laughs> a lot more but you you opened a whole facility equipment you know looks lights um machines like in right. your pocket like how much how much did you come out with um, so I guess it varies from gym to gym. Correct. Um, different gyms focus on different stuff. More gyms have more machines. For us, we're like more of like a powerlifting gym. So we yep. focus on free weights. Exactly. The kilos. So I guess it's a little cheaper than, you know, buying like equipment. You know, yeah. Um, buying like machines, different type of machines and stuff like that. So I would say um, in the beginning, my initial investment would be, would have been, it was around 30000 and at that time, I had a partner. Yeah. So in total, I would say it's around 60000 Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought it was, you were going to cut, like, cut it in half. Like, yo, but 60. Yeah, 60. Was that, was that still, like, was that more than enough? Or, like, there was still a lot more to be invested? There was still a lot more to be invested. Um, even moving into the new spot, I had to reinvest more money. So I honestly haven't paid myself out yet. And it's been, like, three years. So every, all the money I make, you know, goes back into back into it. Exactly. Yeah, that's literally what we were just saying before you got here that, you know, uh, I think in the next week or two, we come out with our first shirt, not even our first line, just our first shirt. Mm -hmm. And what we said and how I, I've been telling them, it's like, yo, like whatever we get, I can go ahead and I can take it home and be like, yo, I made this amount of money, pay myself back. Right. It's like, yo, like we're putting it all right back into it. That's the way to go. Yeah. So, like, what would it be, like, your best business business advice for, like, that young entrepreneur that's tr trying to come up? Uh, business advice, I would say. It can be harsh, bro. <laughs> you can cuss on this fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, I would say for business advice, don't be afraid to take risks. You know, all these um, young guys they don't have anything to lose, you know, from age like 18 to like 30. Yeah. You know, you don't have no obligations to anyone. Um, don't be afraid to take those risks. Like after you pass 30, you know, Correct. you're trying to settle down, start a family and stuff. You have responsibilities. Facts. But at this time, you know, right now, like I'd say like, don't be if you have something in mind and, you know, don't be afraid to take it. Take the chance. What if you don't mind? Us asking and your audience uh -huh. learning this. How old are you, Adam? So I just turned 27 last month. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. But <laughs> you, you said something early, like just right now. You got nothing to lose at a young age. Why right. do you say that? Or why do you feel like that? Everybody is like mm -hmm. obviously different. And I think to be in a business or in any sort of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. you gotta just have it instilled in you and it goes back to like who you have around you 
Exactly. If you don't have the right people around you wanting more, like mm -hmm. I don't think none of us would ever be in this even position. So why would you say you got nothing to lose at a young age? So I would say like pretty much what I said earlier, you don't have no responsibilities. Thanks. You don't have kids. You don't have a family. Well, I can't say that for everyone, but for the most part, people that are you know around this age group, um, they don't have that much responsibilities yet. So surround yourself with people yeah. that, you know, have the same mindset as you. And then, like, for me, like I said, the opportunity came up for me and I took it. And, you know, you don't always want to, like, keep living your life wondering, like, what could have been if I took that, if I didn't take that opportunity. Facts. You know? but, a lot, but a lot of people, like, end up with that. Years later, like, yo, mm -hmm. I wonder what this could have been if I would have really taken that chance at that point in time. Yeah, so, so that that would be my advice for the younger people. Like I'm telling you now, like take that risk. Damn. Yeah. No. And I think the crazy the craziest part is a lot of people always talk about it of wanting more and being something and having something to to live by and being your own boss, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Like you have your own business. You still work a nine to five, so you still have a boss. And then you leave yeah. that one and you're your own boss. So it's just like you're literally living both both sides of that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But you seem content with it. Yeah, I love it, dude. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't change it. And what kind of industry are you in, in the in the other job? So the other job, um, I pretty much do like aerospace, like for the military. Ah. And it's also what I studied in college, so oh, everything shit. like kind of lined up perfectly for me. Yeah. So would like you I said the opportunity? Yeah, yeah, it came. It just aligned for me for everything. So yeah. would you give the advice, or would you recommend a young person go to college? Like, would you learn in college yeah. to use it now in your personal business? Um, <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say for business and like you don't need to go to school for business. I heard the best teacher for business is having a business. Business, I say for business, like it's all through experience and people you know, networking. Yeah. Um, talking to people, learning from people that have already been successful. Right. Exactly. So what, now that you're in business, how do you go about, like, what kind of moves do you make for your gym, for your own personal business? What What's the atmosphere you get into? What is... The people that you know, like, do you go to other gyms and, mm -hmm. and check them out to see what you can improve in? Or is this more like? Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I know. So right now, like, commercial gyms, like, no one wants to go to them anymore. Everyone wants to go to a private powerlifting gym, right? Yeah. So I actually know a lot of owners throughout, like, SoCal. Oh, shit. Um, gym owners and stuff. And I'm cool with all of them. Yeah. And uh, we talk from time to time. Um, you know, we... We kind of see what the other person's doing, like, like you said. Yeah. And then kind of find our own way to do it and how to, like, um, not, like, replicate it, but kind of do it in our own way for it to work for us. Like, you're, I feel like you're you're doing it for, one, the city, because I don't, I mean, there's a lot of businesses in Irwindale, mm -hmm. but, like, you're literally, you're from there, you said, right? No, I actually live in uh, uh, El Monte. God damn, yes sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Did you go to a multi high school? Uh, I went to a royal high school. Okay, yeah. okay. Right there, right down the street still from, from where you're at. Mm -hmm. But out of out of the friends that you had in high school, you said you, you hung out with people older than you. Right. Was that just like the, the setup for where you're at now because you were hanging out with people that were older? Like, maybe wanting different things at, at a young age. Because, fuck, when you're young, high school, I remember mine, I just wanted to party, have fun, no responsibilities. But it just, people that, how you said earlier, like, people that you do have around you are the ones that, like, really make you. Like, if they want to party, then you're going to go party. Right. But if they want to go work and get money, <laughs> you're going to go work and get money. So coming from El Monte, from a city, mm -hmm. how was that transition into, hey, can we call it corporate America? I don't know if we can call it corporate America. So my job, it isn't really like corporate, which is why it allows me to 
do what I can do. But I think if I were to work a corporate job, you know, down here in downtown LA, yeah, it would be a whole different story. But like being in the gym, having having your business, you know, I want to shine light on hidden strength on on you because, like you said, you don't have no necessity to do this. Mm-hmm. You're good at where you're at, but you want more. You're doing more. So taking hidden hidden strength to the next level. What's what's the idea, the format that you're trying to aim at? Because you said right now, like you haven't gotten paid back, and you have three years into this. So how how do you keep going when you don't see that return just yet? Or what is the return that you do get? To be honest, um, it's all for my members. Dude, like I, I love the community. I love bringing people together. Yeah. Um, just having everyone come to one place and just doing what they want to do, achieve their goals. Facts. Like lifting or anything. Like you know? you're, you're that person that, you know, and how I think we've said it too. Like, if no one else is going to do it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to exactly. be that person for those people that yeah. have the aspirations and, and the hopes to one day do this. Do you feel like for your people, for your from where your parents come from and everything, like, do you feel like you're an uh, inspiring person to to your people, to your friend groups? Like, uh, I would hope so. <laughs> uh, but to be honest, you know, I like to stay humble. I'm always, like, willing to learn from someone else. Yeah. You know, I'm just because, like, I'm not at the top yet. But even if you are at the top, you know, you, you still have more to learn. Oh, you know, always. Exactly. I think if the point you stop learning, it's like you're not going to continue to grow. Like, mm-hmm. there's always room for improvement. The people that we have here, like, we're always learning, improving, growing. We got an audience outside. <laughs> uh, learning, improving, growing. But it, it's it's an ongoing thing because maybe is there plans to expand hidden strength even more? Oh, definitely, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, hopefully, in the next by the end of this year, hopefully we can you know expand a little more. In the in the same uh, area or removing areas. So like expand our current location, maybe like in the next unit or something. Break the fucking wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. That's the whole point of business, right? Mm-hmm. That you do good one year, you do good the next year, mm-hmm. and it's like, all right, well, how can we get better even the following year? Yeah, exactly. So there, I don't think there's ever a point like you just stop fucking growing, right? I don't think there's ever a point where you just say, ah, fuck it, this is enough. I got enough. Like, the people that I have around me is enough. But having o- almost 200 members, like, the next time you grow, you can have three, 400 that means more people are looking at you and it's like, yo, like, this fucker is really doing it, right? <laughs> like, and <laughs> with all due respect, like, that's just like, yo, like, this person who is humble, quiet, conservative, is really behind the scenes doing all the all the right moves to fucking keep the lights on in this place. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. So, like, what what's one, one thing that you learned throughout this process, like a good and a bad thing? Um, good in the, something I learned, um, off the top of my head. Yeah, 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 off the top of your head. Top of my head. Um, I can't think right now. <laughs> it's the cameras, Adam, it's the cameras, yeah. that's why. <laughs> something I learned, I don't know, I think it falls back into, like, don't be afraid to take the risk. You know? Don't be afraid. Whatever ideas you have that come to mind, yeah, or whatever you think would be a good idea in terms of your business. Facts. Anything, I say follow your intuition. Mm. You know? Did when opening the gym and going into the gym, did you have a lot of people like telling you no, like don't do it, don't don't jump into that that deep end of the water? Oh yeah, definitely. Even from my parents. Mm. Yeah. So coming from like a you know Asian background. You know how it is. Yeah. Um, they want you to go to school and stuff like stereotypical stuff, like be a doctor and stuff. <laughs> but I didn't want to go to college, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and then I was, yeah, I was in this mindset from like 16. Yeah, because you said, like, because um, I said, like, you know, my friend groups and stuff. Correct. So even off the bat, like, they didn't want me to open a business. Oh, they told you what? 
Don't stick to school. Stick to school. Yeah. So, even right now, like, do your parents still believe, <laughs> or like, they still have their like their doubts here and there? A little. They're a little more open to it now. Just have they gone to the gym? Yeah, they've gone to the gym. That's why. Yeah, they've gone to the gym. That's right. Um, and they can see, you know, everyone coming in. Yeah. Uh, all the members we have now expanding to a new place, you know. So. Um, do they see that their that their son is like a motivational person to to this young young generation? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. But it, that's uh that's commendable because how you said coming from from your Asian background. You know, us coming from our Hispanic background, like mm -hmm. how you said, our parents, they don't know any other way but go to school, go get that secure job and the secure title, and you're going to get a great job and a great career, great yeah. a, find a great partner, happily ever after, so on and so forth. But I think now in this in this generation that we're in, in, in this lifestyle, that isn't the correct way anymore. Everybody has their correct way. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be a doctor, lawyer, well, I hope you, you go to school and you go to a great school for, for those type of things, right? But everybody has aspirations to be their own boss, have their own brand, have, have their own business. But there's a lot that goes, goes into it be, behind the scenes. I don't think, besides your friend group, I don't think nobody else knows exactly what you got to endure day yeah. in, Monday through Sunday, right? Like today you said your Sundays are... For the gym, you go in, you set up for the week. Pretty much, you make yeah. sure everything is good for for your people, for your clients. Because your gym is what twenty four hours. It is twenty four hour access, yeah. So if your twenty four hour gym isn't twenty four hour, <laughs> you know where to go, my guys. But so how do you, how do you trust that? Like giving the when you sign up a new member, is there is it just free trust? Like you're right, you got twenty four hour access. Or is it like you got to kind of see who the person is before you let them in? So for the most part, um, whether whoever it is that comes in for a day pass or even to come get a tour of the gym or sign up for a membership, I'll always make the effort to come out there and meet you guys. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not going to let the person come in and be like, hey, you're on your own. <laughs> like, you know, I like to make the effort. Open the door. <laughs> yeah, introduce myself, show, show them around the gym. Yeah, and like you said, kind of get to know the person, yeah. see who I'm letting in, correct? See who I'm giving ac access to to the gym. So, and then pretty much we just go from there. Mm. Well, it's it is good to go and get that first hand like meet because everybody on social media or over the phone can have great intentions, but mm -hmm. until you really meet them, see their energy, and you can see who they really are, I think. By the handshake, by a hug, by whatever it is, like you can really see exactly yeah. who they are. You know what I mean? Like I think that's just what's important. Important for us to to do that. And our um, media person personnel is telling us we got a minute. Dylan, you got it, big guy. Don't worry about it. Let's do, let's take the break. Cheers. A toast. A toast. <laughs> All right. So we took that thirty second break. But, yeah, usually the podcast goes 45 to 50 minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, it's not, it's not too bad. It's, again, for the people that are tuning into a podcast or are going to do a podcast, like, it just depends on your, your audience. Some people, yeah, we started people, audience, my family. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's, like, they, them two have their own podcast, so, like, Aubrey, her podcast goes from, what, like, 15, 20 minutes? Typically. Now her latest, Against All Odds, went from 20 minutes to an hour. So, you got to go check that out. Tap in. And then Cindy's goes from your podcast. What does it go from, like, 30 minutes to, like, an hour? <laughs> you said choke me, daddy? Okay. It's choke me, daddy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, the, it's just the audience, right? Like, they're both tapping in. Me and Aubrey kind of tap into almost the same personnel. Um, 
But Cindy taps into like two different ones. But it's it's knowing your audience, knowing who who you have, who you're targeting. Some podcasts are good at 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like we did finally a QA and a uh, last week, two weeks ago, and it was 30 minutes. You know, you don't want to take a Q&A to like an hour because people are going to lose interest. Right. But when we talk about motivational people, inspirational people, business owners, like business doesn't take a 30-minute topic. It takes an hour. It takes 45 minutes. And there's still more to be talked about. So usually when we have a great conversation, and we always do, it's it can go from 30 minutes to like an hour, but it goes back to the type of friend group. Like for everybody listening in, if again, if you haven't subscribed, you got to go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Um, it all depends on who you have around you. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, if I have people that are doing it, like really doing something with their life, they have inspiration, aspirations to do better and get more. It's like, all right, how can we, how can we get ideas out there? How can we do this and do that? And we feed off of each other, that energy. Because... They were like, I, I just turned 20. Well, I didn't just, just did. I turned 26 in October. Like, I haven't popped bottles in, like, years. Like, I, I really don't see the point of <laughs> going to the club and paying 300 bucks, 200 bucks for a Ciroc bottle that's worth 30 bucks. Right. My thing is, I'm going to spend 300. That better be something to do with here mm -hmm. or something that's going to allow me and my team to enjoy it. I mean, popping bottles is cool, but... So I can go to Bevmo and buy that same bottle for <laughs> 15 bucks. So, like, was that a transition for you, like, managing money, or were you always kind of good with your money? Um, for which part? For, the for yourself, personally. From graduating high school to going into business, like, and college, was handling money a thing for you? Because I know, fuck, be honest, I was not good with money. I would get 100 bucks, I would spend $90. Yeah. To be honest, <laughs> right I, away. I wasn't either, just because um, we talked about my car and stuff and how much money I put into that. Um, but later, you know, as you grow older and stuff, you kind of realize, you know, what you want to put your money into. Yeah. And stuff like that. What's more important to you? What you're going to put your money into? Do you believe in that rule that if you get a paycheck, you save like 30% of it or you only spend 30% of it, right? I think I'm correct. What is it? Like, do you guys know that, Cindy? The spending rule? Is it 15, 20, save 50, spend 20, and do something like that? I've, yeah, I've heard, of, I've heard of that. That is not me. Fair enough. <laughs> that is not me whatsoever. Yeah. Some shit like that. Do you go by the certain rules, like, for your... I've heard of it. Um, I believe it, but I don't follow it to the truth. You know, like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know what I'm doing, but I'm not going to do it. Um, that kind of ties into like the business advice um, yeah. that you asked me earlier. Correct. So I would say like another piece of advice for people trying to start their own business is balance. Mm. Like you said, um, you know, going to the club and stuff. You don't have to go to a club. <laughs> you but really don't. But is this good? I can hear you now, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, is that good? Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. hear you good. I would say... Um, Pretty much, you know, all the people, young guys nowadays, they're just all about, like, grind, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. Yeah. But I would say take a step back and, like, find the balance where you're happy with everything you're doing. You know, don't, like, beat yourself up, you know, with your business and stuff. Facts. Kind of take the time and enjoy what you're doing. It's a marathon, not a sprint, you know. It's kind of cliche. Everyone says it, but. It's a marathon. Exactly. It's for the long haul. And that's like I've I've said it too. Like the longevity, like it's not just for the now. And everybody wants to have the nice cars, the nice the nice possessions, the right. the whatever it is, whatever is everybody into. Like it's not just a now. Like you want to make sure. It's like when you get your, your paycheck this week, mm -hmm. you know you're gonna go eat at a good restaurant, but next week you're gonna eat fucking cup of noodles <laughs> because you know you think about the longevity. Like yo, I want to make sure I eat good, healthy. Yeah. Oh, whatever, healthy or not, but good food today, tomorrow, the next day, and it's like continuing it, right. and not like oh, I spent, I got a hundred bucks. How I said earlier, spent a hundred bucks. I got a hundred bucks, spent ninety, and now only got ten. Mm -hmm. It's like well, I spent fifty into something that's gonna make me a hundred, so on and so forth. But the whole like the whole money part for a lot of people it does drive people insane, mm -hmm. crazy. 
So what, like, how do, how do you manage your stress? How do you manage your emotions throughout business and work? Um, pretty much I'm, like I said, I like my job. So that's already takes a lot of stress off because after I'm off my job, it's not like a corporate job. So after I'm off at five o'clock, I don't have to worry about it. All my focus shifts to the gym. Yeah. And then when I'm at the gym, you know, people go work out to relieve stress. Fair. Right. So when I'm working out, you know, that's my main focus right there. And then on the weekends or like my rest days and stuff, that's when I shift my focus into the gym itself. And like, you know, seeing what I need to improve, stuff like that. Facts. And cleaning everything up, prepping it for the week and stuff. So like I said, too, that ties back into balance. Yeah, yeah for sure. It, it's difficult to find a balance, mm-hmm. but it's not difficult. Like everybody knows like what you have to do. Everybody knows what you need to quote-unquote, handle, mm-hmm. and people choose not to to do those type of things. People say, oh, like, I know I got to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to do it because I want to be stuck in this hard, in this hardship. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, go to the gym, go relieve your stress, but when you get back, like, that stress is still there, and you're still not doing anything about it. I think a lot of people just, um, I think at a point, like, they all just, they try to mask it. Like, pretend it's not there and it's fucking really just standing right there waiting to fucking eat you up at one point. Right. So, do you, you don't have kids? I do not have kids. Are you married? I'm not married. Do you believe in marriage? Yeah, I believe in marriage. I don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a girlfriend? I don't have a girlfriend. Bachelors. He's a bachelor. He's up for, <laughs> I'm so <just> kidding. <laughs> What podcast are we on again? <laughs> We're on a find, <laughs> find your, find the one. <laughs> so, um, when you tra- transition into your business, going back to your business, what, 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 what would you say was that hard thing to get over? Was it trying to fit in? Was it trying to, fuck, what is it? I wasn't trying to fit in. I wanted our gym to be different than everyone. Mm. You know, that's why I got, you know, the lighting you said was, you saw. Yeah. Um, that's different, you know, um, the type of equipment we have and stuff. Facts. And then our members, our community, that, that makes us different than everyone else. What What's so special about your community? <laughs> um, you know, everyone at my gym, I'd say they're driven in their own ways. Correct. You know, they all have their goals and everyone comes in and they put in the work. They represent you. They represent the brand. Yeah, exactly. Would you call your gym a brand or a movement? Um, I'd say movement. That's the same thing with you with us. Yeah, it's a not just a brand. It's a movement. There's a lot to. It's a lifestyle. It ha- yes, bro. Yeah. It is. It is a lifestyle mm-hmm. because it's not. Ju- it doesn't just end when you're done. Like it continues. Right. You know what I mean? Like. <clears throat> for you, you're doing it for your people. Those people that are in there are doing it not just for the for the name on on the wall, but doing it for themselves and for maybe other people that are counting on them. So like this sun last Sunday we were at a at that meet. Mm-hmm. Like everybody in there, like you had members that were competing, and it's just like yo, <laughs> that's fucking insane. Like these mm-hmm. dudes are out here representing themselves, but you know they're coming from our home gym, our house that. That's where they we created an environment to build that work. Mm-hmm. So with with everybody around you, where there once you open hidden strength, were there people, and I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody, but I think it just happens when you open a business, were there people trying to just take from you? Like come in and be like, yo, can we get a free gym session? Bro, all the time. <laughs> all the time, man. <laughs> Um, yeah, no one knows, like, the amount of messages, DMs I get from people, like, even people I knew from, like, high school. Yeah. That don't even, like, hit me up, up until, like, now like, Now you open a gym. Yeah. Like, hey, can I get a workout in? Can I get a discount? I'm like, bro, if you're my homie, dude, like, you're going to support me no matter what. Exactly. Facts. You can pay the full price, not half the price. Exactly. I know, like, and I think a lot of people, like, take that of. They go to the extent where you do that and they're just like, 
you changed. Like, you weren't this person. Like, you changed. It's like, yo, I needed to. Like, if I'm not this person, then there's no way in hell that this business is even going to keep the doors open. Right. Because imagine how many people came came to you asking mm-hmm. you for that, and that's all the money that you lost. That would keep the lights on. That would keep the water on. That would keep, you know, everything else available. So yeah. were there people that you lost along the way when when you transitioned into, into the gym and continue like even after the year continuing um for the most part i'd say people they that believe in us and that support me they they stick with us yeah you know um maybe a couple people here and there that like you know what like i don't want to support you i'm gonna go to another gym but for the most part you know i have a lot of good friends and so a lot of people um that surround me that support me facts I'm, i'm grateful for that I wouldn't be here without any of them, you know. Shout you guys out! Don't cry for watching this <laughs> because shout out to all them, yeah. Shout out to all my members, all my friends, everyone that helped me get to where I'm at today. Without them, you wouldn't be here. No. So you believe in that in that saying, like it takes a village. Oh, definitely. Definitely. It does, bro. I think um, David said it best last time. Like everybody wants to be self-made, but in reality, like we're not self-made. We have a group, we have a team yeah. behind us that are helping us in some sort of way. And it's like, yeah, because of all of us, now we're here. Yeah, it does take a head of the head of the snake, right? Like it takes the brain, but mm-hmm. it takes everybody to run the motor. I've yeah, I've learned that too, you know, the hard way. You know, I've always wanted to run every everything on my own and not accept help. Yeah. You know, but like we're human. We're not machines, you know. Yeah, we need if someone's offering to help you and stuff, you know, take it. They support you. Yeah. They want you to be successful. You know? They care about you. They care about you, yeah. But is there to end this dude, great fucking podcast. Like you literally saying in the I think we're now like at forty, forty five minutes, but people don't really know who you really are until like they really listen in and they listen to the people talk. I'm glad you came out here and you gave us that knowledge, dropping these gems. But is there a phrase that you live by every day? Um, off the top of my head, no. I can't think of anything. Mm. Is there a phrase you want to give everybody else <laughs> that helped you? Um, ties back into the name hidden. And honestly, I think the name itself, it applies to anything. You know, not even just lifting. Yeah. You know, hidden strength. Um, people from all different types of backgrounds. You know, you guys and your podcast. Um, athletes, you know, can find your hidden strength within. The facts. Yeah. And with that, you can always give a toast to life, too. Because without the life, bro, <laughs> you know, what, what can we... This is why the same thing, like, a toast to life for me was, you know, like, Every time someone gives cheers and oh, to a great time, blah, blah, blah. but yo, like we got to give it up, be a little fancy, a toast, yeah. but like, we got to be grateful for the life that we do have. And yeah. throughout the trials and tribulations, throughout the ups and downs, like how, how I've said it, like the, the ugly, the beauty, you know, and all that that comes with it. Like, yo, we got to be thankful for those times that made us and shaped us to who we are now. Mm-hmm. Without all those times, Adam, you wouldn't even be here, big guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, without how you without your friends, without the opportunities, like without you being who you were, like then hidden hidden strength wouldn't be here. I appreciate you saying that, man. It, I'm, yeah. I'm, we gotta give the we gotta give the flowers and that phrase from, comes from other people, but the flowers to the people that really have done it. Like you how you said, you have a community and a, and people that depend on you to keep those lights and those doors open. And you do everything possible to give back to that. So, yo, we got to give it up for Adam because. Thank you. Got to give it up for Hidden Strength and the man behind behind the the name. And honestly, bro, like, you got to give yourself a pat on the back. Have you done that? Have you given yourself those flowers by yourself? I haven't. No, not really. Ah, Adam, you got to do <laughs> it, big guy. You got to. I think at one point you got to just 
look at everything you've got and like, yo, like, I really did this. I want to keep going. I'm not content yet. That's right. Hungry. Hungry for the next. So you said in the next year we can await a bigger location. Definitely. Is that the... Is is there anything else that your audience, your people, don't know that's coming yet for Hidden Strength? Um, something I have on mind is um, I'm definitely going to try and host a meet, powerlifting meet. Um, we're dropping new merch and definitely looking into the expansion whenever I get the chance. Yes, sir. So, again, if you don't got a gym or your gym fucking sucks, <laughs> no offense to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this gym, if you're around the 626 area, or even if you don't mind taking a little bit of a drive, yo, it's in Irwindale. If, yes, you, if you need a location, it's by, by Santa Fe Dam, right? If you're around that area, you should know that place. But off the 605 freeway. Off the 605 freeway, close to the 210, a couple minutes away from the t- <laughs> We're throwing all the Google Maps out here. <laughs> the longitude, the latitude, I'm going to tell you right now. But, no, in all honesty, I think everybody here has been to this gym. It's it's different. How it's one of those things that you have to be there to witness the energy, the environment, you know, take advantage of the lighting, <laughs> of the equipment, because, yo, you you have strength that's hidden, and you just got to bring it out. Oh! <laughs> Do another fucking... Ep- we got a toaster, bro. We got a toast. A toast, another great podcast, another great episode. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Hit the subscribe button, like.